This week's podcast is sponsored by thejoyofplants.co.uk. During the next couple of weeks, The Joy of Plants will be showing us all how to achieve wabi-sabi with our house plants. The Joy of Plants invites you to step into the home of London-based botanical artist, florist and prop stylist Yasuyo Harvey for wabi-sabi style inspiration and to get a glimpse of the gorgeous plants in her home. Visit thejoyofplants.co.uk for the latest plant-filled inspiration, care tips and DIY projects. Hello and welcome to episode 67 of On The Ledge podcast. I know it's only a Monday, but there we go. We're bringing you something different this week. It's Trailing Plants Week on On The Ledge. And every day from Monday onwards, I'm going to be bringing you a mini episode of the podcast focusing on a different trailing plant. And we're starting today with well, I think it's one of the most iconic trailing plants there is. Senecio rolianus, or the string of pearls, or string of beads, as I've also seen it called. I think it should be called string of peas because, to me, those little green globes look rather like the things on my dinner plate. Except, of course, they are held together with the finest thread-like stems, which is why if you've ever bought one of these plants mail order and had it delivered, you will spend some time trying to unravel the stems without breaking them. But let's delve a little bit more into the background of this plant. The Senecio genus is about a thousand strong in terms of species, and they come in all shapes and sizes, and not all of them are succulent. Senecio rolianus, though, is native to a very, very small part of southwest Africa, and in its native habitat, it grows along the ground and wherever that stem can, it will root into the ground. And that's a key point here, because if you want to propagate this plant, it is very easy to do. You can just take off a string from your string of pearls and lay it on the top of some very gritty compost and it will root in absolutely no time. I tend to take a little strip of the pearls off one end of the stem and then bury that stem in that gritty compost, which really helps to start the rooting process going. But it will also root along the stem wherever it's touching the compost. Why does it have these globe-like leaves? Well, it's all about dealing with the desert conditions in which it grows. Less evaporation happens when you've got a perfectly round leaf. It can store lots of water, but there's not much surface area actually exposed to the air through which evaporation can happen. Examine your string of pearls really closely and you may notice there's a darker strip running along the length of the globe. A bit like a stripe on an old-fashioned beach ball. This is known as an epidermal window or a leaf window. And this is a feature common to quite a few succulent plants, including lithops or the stone plants and Haworthias. So these see-through windows allow more light into the plant in order to make sure that photosynthesis is efficient as possible. So it can maximise the amount of light it gets without exposing itself to too much evaporation. If you can't see that strip, then hold your plant up to the light and you should be able to see it shining out. It's worth mentioning for you taxonomy fans that this plant has actually in the last few years been moved to a new genus called Curio, C-U-R-I-O. For the moment, most of us seem to be calling it Senecio still. If your Senecio has not yet flowered, then you've got a treat coming up because the flowers, they're small and white and they have little red stamens and bright yellow anthers. But the exciting thing about them is they smell of cinnamon, which is one of my favourite scents. So do give them a sniff if yours do flower. And the seed heads that follow, well, they look a bit like dandelions, which is rather fun. I've seen an awful lot of string of pearls looking very sad on social media. People buy this plant and then wonder why it hasn't done well for them. And as is often the case, but particularly with this particular plant, overwatering is to blame. Let's take a step inside my house to go and look at my Senecio rolianus plants and find out a bit more about how to take care of them. So the first thing to note about the Senecio rolianus is that it doesn't require blaring sunlight 
every hour of the day. It does require lots of bright light. I've got mine in my north facing glass roofed conservatory high up on a shelf, which is about a meter from the window. So it's getting loads of light, but not a massive amount of direct sunlight, probably a couple of hours a day. And they do very well there. Minimum temperature wise, well, 10 degrees centigrade is probably the absolute minimum you should go to, but more like 15 would be better. 10 Celsius is about 50 Fahrenheit, just to let you know. And this plant will survive very nicely at classic room temperatures of about 20 degrees centigrade. That's 68 Fahrenheit. Where most people go wrong with this plant is over watering. It likes a very sharply draining compost. Mine is in a 50-50 split between John Innes number two and either grit or dust-free non-clumping cat litter. And I also keep these in terracotta pots because that allows any excess moisture to evaporate away from the potting soil, keeping the plant nice and dry, which is how it likes it. It does need water. In the summer, I water once a week, but during the winter that goes down to, well, once a month maximum. And the plants do very well on that. Bear in mind, those little balls are like sponges soaking up moisture. So it's pretty hard to allow this plant to dry out too much. If you feel your plant isn't full enough, you can, of course, drape some of the strings back onto the soil and they should root fairly easily. And if you find that your strings are getting too long, then just chop a few off and use those as cuttings. So I hope that you'll find that useful in keeping your string of pearls a little bit happier. If any of you have got the variegated form and want to send me a cutting of that, please do. It's a beautiful, <laughs> because I'd love one. Just imagine the string of pearls with some cream splashes on there and that about sums it up. But it's a very rare plant, so I haven't managed to get my hands on one yet. That about wraps up string of pearls for today. I'll be back tomorrow with Hoya Linearis, so do join me then. Do visit my show notes at janeperone.com where you'll find more information and images of the string of pearls. The music you heard in this episode was Roll Jordan Roll by the Joy Drops, which is licensed under Creative Commons. See janeperone.com for details. Mm-hmm.